Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. Coming up, an amazing new Jack Wolf knife. I show off the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife for July, or I mean June <laughs> 2023. And then, what if you were Prop Master? The three knife carry of five different character types coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week made me think was from John Motor on the Winkler interview uh, podcast. He commented, Winkler knives do, do have this charm of old times i think they do not only fit in american history i can tell you they also fit very well in dark german and european forests so i like this for a couple of reasons first of all i like the imagery of dark german and european forests and yes they do uh, seem it does seem like they would fit in there um the winkler knives are are very um simple i mean they are incredibly effective uh strong durable uh, beautiful knives, but they're also very simple in their design, and uh, they're sort of uh, meta knives, and yeah, they would fit in anywhere. But another part of this that I like is that uh, it just sort of underlines the fact that even though Winkler knives do have this uh, very old feel to them, uh, Daniel Winkler coming out of the um, reenactment, the Revolutionary War reenactment scene, um, but they still resonate with people like uh, the U.S. Navy SEALs who have their hands on the most advanced equipment possible, uh, yet still they go for these knives uh, that uh, are just sort of old world. So they they fit in across space, i.e. Germany and dark European forests and America, as well as time. Um, so they're timeless designs. Anyway, uh, waxed a little philosophical when I read that, but thank you, John, and thank you one and all for watching and commenting. It's greatly appreciated. Now, all that being said, and that was quite a bit, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today in my front right pocket uh, starring role was the TRM Atom. I have not carried this one in quite a while. This was a gift uh, from TRM. Um, well, it was a it was a sort of gift um, it, when it, when these were very hard to come by, especially with that DLC coating. Uh, Marianne totally hooked me up. This is a factory second, and you can see that from the two dots right next to the T. Hang on, let me get this in focus. Two dots right next to the TRM USA, and um, it is because of a tiny little blemish in that DLC that just goes to show you the kind of quality there thereafter at TRM. Um, such a great company. This is such a nice knife. It's so thin and and still sturdy. And it's got that nice uh, 3.7 inch, 3.6 inch blade. Very, very slicey. This one is in 20 CV. And uh, the reason I'm carrying it is because I just recently swapped out the scales. That's uh, This was kind of the first knife where you could do that. I know NAF's uh, knives now, you can do that and and, and some others. Uh, but all you have to do to change the, the scales out, and they sell many different types of scales, is just remove those two screws. That simple. And on the back side, it's the two screws for the pocket clip and then this screw right here. And then you've got a seemingly brand new knife. These scales uh, were a gift to me from Marianne from Blade Show 2022. And I really love burlap micarta, but they also have this milled in wing pattern. So I like the the, the brown and the black together. And um, this is nice summer weight carry. And uh, summer is starting to come on pretty strong uh, around these parts. All right, next up in my pocket, I had the Sharpshooter Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Um, the, the one that started it all, this was the very first one. And uh, I still love this knife, I say still, uh, because 12 others have come since. And you'll be seeing in the state of the collection, the one that just showed up. God, it, it's amazing. And uh, Ben Belkin does not, um, you know, I don't, I don't say this lightly. He does not fail to um, amaze. Uh, because he's been designing uh, these really uh, impeccable slip joint knives. 
And uh, now he's come out with something new, a totally new format, if you will. And he's nailed it on his first time out. We'll check that out shortly. Uh, but this is a little foreshadowing to that, uh, given the pattern type. This is the gun stock pattern. If you look at that handle, it looks like a gun stock, uh, like an old lever action uh, gun stock. And the, the great thing about all of these Jack Wolf knives being single bladed um, you really do get to experience the full ergonomics of these different handle types and these different pattern types. The other, um, one of the other gun stock jacks I have is the 44 and it, it's a great knife, but you don't feel that little step in the, in the ergonomics because there's a pen blade there and the spine of the pen blade obscures that shape. Um, so it's, it's really great to have that on all of these knives, but, uh, this is what was in my, um, Slip joint pocket, it, that varies. Uh, it usually starts the day in the left pocket, ends up migrating to my back pocket. Uh, okay, next up um, in the fixed blade roll today, I had a new knife, one that I got from Blade Show. This was my uh, auxiliary manufacturing pocket rocket. Uh, this is the dagger and in uh, the three inch dagger. Now they have a larger one and a smaller one. They even have a, a three inch with a small handle. That's very interesting. It's like a three finger handle or a two and a half finger handle. Uh, this one is, this is a, this is a perfect knife. I'll say, um, <clears throat> first of all, upon examining it, uh, Michael Jarvis, the maker of this and the, and the proprietor of uh, auxiliary manufacturing is uh, a very, very good knife maker. I mean, you look at, at all of these grinds, they're perfectly symmetrical and um, he does these by hand. And the, the blades come to a very thin edge um, and a very acute point. And this faceted handle, it's sort of got these curved facets everywhere, is incredibly comfortable and, and uh, very secure in hand. You know, this is a dagger minus any quillions or hand guards. So these, um, these swales on both sides of the handle, both here and here, really aid in keeping that knife uh, in hand. Now I have not thrusted this into anything, um, at all actually, but I would imagine if you were to, uh, you'd be relying on that super acute point, uh, to be breaching whatever you're going into. And then you have, uh, again, these swales here and then, and then as it wraps around your finger is, is going into this, uh, side swale too. So it's three dimensional. You get a really, really good grip, but of course the way I carry it appendix style, um, it's more likely to be drawn in a reverse grip, uh, though it is very easy to just turn your hand <laughs> and draw it in a, in a forward grip. So I'm really a big uh, proponent now of appendix carry. This one, having a short blade, is great for appendix carry because when you sit down, you don't get the digging down issue that might happen. You don't have to like change positions, uh, its position when you sit. And then I have added, I'm a I'm a new devotee to this. I like this. Uh, I've added a bit of inner tube uh, under the clip here, and that prevents it from changing angle. Once once I've gotten it into a comfortable position uh, under my waistband, that rubber kind of keeps it um, anchored in the in the spot you want it in the, at the angle you want it. So there's the pocket rocket. Really, really nice knife. Uh, you should check out uh, auxiliary manufacturing. Um, Go to the website, uh, follow them on Instagram. He does amazing stuff. A lot of it is uh, EDC and self-defense oriented, but he also does incredible kitchen knives. Just beautiful work. Uh, and he's a nice guy. Uh, that's Michael Jarvis. All right. Uh, next up, lastly on me, speaking of nice guys, uh, Lefty and uh, and Collins uh, Pony Stout right here, Devo Knives, uh, was in my pocket for emotional support and for any sort of cutting. This is a great knife. I love this knife. I totally get why people went gaga over it. Now me, I, I like when people that I, that are my friends and my buddies are, are doing good and making awesome knives. So, um, you know, I might be inclined to like this anyway, but it is awesome. Now I had the first one, the stout, the full size, which had a larger, was larger overall, but had the same basic uh, profile. I had that one on loan when it first came out. I believe it was a prototype and that was a great knife. Uh, but in this uh, sort of contour G10, and I love the looks of the totally blacked out blade, but with this contour G10 and the um, 
hollow ground blade. This thing is a really, really good cutter slicer. Um, even that tip, though, it's not super acute. That tip is really good for draw cutting. Uh, but emotional support. Yes, indeed. This is a great uh, fidget knife, uh, especially for reverse flicking and then dropping the blade, you know, fidgeting. <laughs> and I've felt it over the past week since uh, uh, they gave this to me, which I greatly appreciate. Thank you, fellas. Uh, since they gave this to me, I can feel it breaking in. And what I mean by that is sometimes with coated blades, uh, the the bearings in the pivot need to sort of um, wear down a race in, in the in the coating, and and then you can just feel it get smoother and smoother and smoother. Uh, four great knives, um, and now that I'm looking at it, four four people that I've interviewed, or six five people that I've interviewed, and just a bunch of great knives uh, coming out of these out of these people. American designers and makers. Uh, the TRM Adam, the Jack Wolf Knives, uh, Sharpshooter Jack, the Pocket Rocket by Auxiliary Manufacturing, and the Devo Knives, Pony Stout. What did you have in your pocket? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. I love to get ideas, but I also just like to hear what you classy individuals uh, carry. Now, when I say ladies and gentlemen now, I know that I'm, I, can, I can actually say ladies uh, plural because... Uh, uh, I was just informed yesterday that one of my daughter's 13-year-old uh, friends follows the Knife Junkie. So I like that. We're spreading the good word of the knives uh, throughout the generations and across time. So uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast. Um, well, actually, before we get to that, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't show this. Spectacular knife given to the channel by uh, Dave This Old Sword Blade Reviews. This is from one of my favorite companies, period, from Concept Knives. This is the Warrior. Look at that Tonto. Uh, a, a really cool looking Tonto. This is going to be the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway uh, for June, June 15th. Look at that beautiful blade. I love that Tonto blade with that. Uh, it's got a sort of little clip right up front. It it just gives it a menace and I'm sure quite a utility too. But uh, let's face it, I like the menace factor. Uh, you've got a... Uh, a um, a liner lock here with bolsters and a deep carry pocket clip and a high visibility G10 uh, milled uh, incredible action thumb stud action with with bearings and um, thank you so much Dave this is such a luck I, I love uh, concept I, I think they were one of my favorite production tables uh, to lurk around at, at Blade Show. I'm not, when I go to Blade Show, I spend most of my time at custom makers tables and smaller makers tables. Uh, but I do go to the big booths too. Where I hang out the most, I have to say, is usually concept the last two years. I, I like we, it's it's cool to uh, pick up and, and, and uh, experience a lot of the knives I talk about here on the channel through the year, uh, through, throughout the year. Civivi, we, uh, they put out a lot of knives. It's great to go check those out. But the ones I'm, I get most excited about are Concept. Also Best Tech. Love Best Tech. Uh, but anyway, so this this will be the knife giveaway knife. Um, I got to say, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not sure who designed this. Um, and, and the only reason I put that into question is I look at that jimping and it looks like Pinkerton jimping where it's not doesn't go all the way across it's little divots on both sides uh but that being said his name would be on this if he designed it so i don't believe that's dirk pinkerton but anyway uh so stay tuned what is a gentleman junkie a gentleman junkie is the the uh, high high tier of support at patreon we have three levels of support traditional junkie uh tactical junkie and gentleman junkie and no matter which level you join in on, you get uh, exclusive from the interviews we do and other stuff, other content. And then as Gentleman Junkie, you get entered automatically into a monthly knife giveaway. So that's what that was all about. And this month, it is this beautiful concept warrior. Um, thanks to Dave, this old sword, Blade Reviews. Okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the James brand in Knife Life News. And then beyond that, the state of the collection. We got a real banger coming up. Uh, if you're interested in helping support in with Patreon and everything I was just talking about, be sure to scan this QR code or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I will say that again. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon.
if you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. You know, seeing that liner uh, always drives me nuts because uh, Knives Ships Free has uh, such amazing knives. But I saw those Bastinellis and it, and it sent my mind tripping in a couple of directions. One being it's been a year since I lost my uh, my my little uh, neck knife and I got to get another one of those. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called at this point. The Bastinelli little little karambit. But also, I forgot to show you all uh, this this thing that I got from Bastinelli this year. And this it's a beautiful rosary. Um, and it's got this bronze. Um, what do you call these guys? Uh, 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 um, Crusader here. And it says Credo on it. And uh, I was talking to him and, and, and then the string is Kevlar and you can uh, hold, you know, several hundred pounds with this Kevlar. And I was, I was talking to Bastien about it and, and it's a, it's a tactical, <laughs> Uh, rosary. I, and and, and I, I love it, but I, I feel a little weird about it. I want to wear it, but you're not supposed to wear rosaries. And, uh, you know, I, I don't exactly know how to pray the rosary. I, I looked it up and there are a couple of prayers or there's one prayer that, that I don't know. And, uh, <clears throat> but I really love this object. I have it hanging on one of the swords behind me right now. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. You know, a rosary with a skull on it that you use as, you know, cause he was showing me how you can use the, the, crusader this piece of bronze as a weapon and you know how you can swing it and use it as a flail and you know i think it's very cool it, it'd be like having a uh, a crucifix with a switchblade i i would love that but i i'm not so sure how how, <laughs> how it jibes with actual religion so uh anyway beautiful beautiful thing here from bastinelli and uh all all, all things being serious if you have need for a rosary or like this kind of item it is very durable made out of bronze and kevlar and and it and all the beads are you know it has the 10 beads between uh the spacer beads so it's all it's all correct and legit all right but i don't believe they're blessed all right there you go uh so first up in knife life news james brand is doing something uh that we've seen from other outfits like off grid and um and uh artists and cutlery making kitchen slash outdoor knives uh, multi-purpose knives and this one uh, they're making with sitka gear a company that i believe i've heard of but i'm not sure this is their kitchen outdoor knife now to me it looks straight up kitchen uh whereas you look at the grizzly from off-grid knives it, it, it goes both ways you know you could definitely see it in either role uh, this one definitely does just look like a really nice and refined kitchen knife um uh, but it is uh durable uh, magna cut eight inches there um, it's called the anzic it comes with a sheath unlike most uh, kitchen knives they only made 600 of them these are full tang so uh, they assure you but so i'm wondering how do you um how do you i guess you have to have it a little thicker i mean they say in that article that it's optimized for slicing uh they you, know, you can see that garlic up there but down down below you see um you see some some bushcraft stuff happening. So uh, interesting. Uh, I love it. It looks more kitcheny than any other kitchen outdoor knife that I've seen. Um, I don't know. I, I do not have a James Brand knife. I have experienced one. It was well made. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I, they're a favorite of mine. I like to call them a hipster brand because they are pretty lifestyle oriented. All that said, I, I do think they they produce some really nice stuff. And uh, from from what I've heard, that is, and I do know from my eyes in my head that their their designs are actually quite nice. All right, so that is the James Brand and Sitka made Anzic indoor outdoor uh, knife, six hundred made. So jump on it. Uh, next up, I just wanted to show off a couple of Civivi's uh, interesting ones here. Uh, the, the first one and the last one are most interesting to me. Uh, the Snex 
vision, uh, which started as the Vision R with we Snex. If you don't know him, Snex Tan. He's a I believe he's Indonesian, and uh, for a few years there on Instagram, he was painstakingly documenting his process of designing and creating these exquisite folders that he'd make maybe twelve of, and were very coveted. Uh, but but were feats of engineering, you know, uh, no, um, no hardware is a big hallmark of a lot of his designs where they come together uh, without any screws or anything like that. And, you know, he was just kind of making them by hand. Incredible, incredible knives. Well, uh, he broke through to the production world, I believe, initially with Wii. And uh, now uh, you can see that lock on the back. It looks kind of it's evocative of a shark lock. Uh, but that was it. That's called the super lock. Now uh, it's hitting Civivi. So now it's coming down into my realm. Uh, not I, I've always been fascinated with Snex and and his designs. He seems like a mysterious dude making these uh, very sophisticated designs. But I've never been that into them that I wanted to lay out a lot of money, certainly not custom money or effort and uh and not even really we money but now that it's in the civivi realm i want to check out the super lock and uh it'd be cool to just own a snacks design uh so looking forward to that uh the that will be i believe in um uh what uh, i did not write down the steel here um well i i guess they're not saying what it is uh, i'm imagining it'll be in 14c uh, 28 and just like this next one the crawl from ostop hell uh this is a cool little knife from ostop uh he designs a lot of cool little knives uh i i'm thinking currently of the um of the bouquet series uh of of gorgeous little uh flower inspired knives with best tech this civivi uh this this is a cool little neck knife uh he probably designed this while sleeping uh it, it looks it's very cool it's it's very simple uh, i like it uh, i'm all for fixed blades and neck knives so the the more um appealing they are to a broader audience the the happier it makes me uh but the one down below is the one that most interests me in this whole um in this whole article and this is the cedar by ben peterson what is up guys formerly of uh of blade hq and currently of nafs he's a seems to be a very nice guy i kept meaning to go introduce myself at blade show but he was a, a a very very busy man so i'll introduce myself to him virtually i'd love to have him on the show and talk with him uh, uh the lander a uh, uh, huge success for him and of course the the banter and the baby banter huge successes for him uh, but this one is really interesting to me this one looks like one that I, I might get a, go out of my way to get. This one he's calling the Cedar, uh, has a spay blade, first of all, which I love. Uh, you don't see spay main or only blades too often. And here it is. And it's kind of funny because that came up in conversation with Ben Belkin. Uh, would you ever make a knife with a spay blade? Uh, and he said, well, I don't know. I'd have to do some research on that. Something tells me uh, that they wouldn't sell. And and I kind of concurred with him. But the look of this spay blade with the point in the center, and it's 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 got a, a little bit of a sharper point. It almost looks like a clip point or sort of is a clip point. It is an interesting uh, take on the spay. Of course, the spay blade is not supposed to have much of a point because it's it's meant for castration and you don't want to, uh, you're, you're just there to do your, your business uh, with that straight edge. You're not there to poke and, and stab anything uh, unnecessarily. Uh, so, so this looks like a, a pointier version of a spade. Anyway, I like it. Uh, I love the sort of neutral handle looks sort of like a Barlow or, uh, maybe even evocative of a Swiss army knife, something like that. But what's very evocative of the Swiss army knife is the toothpick and tweezers that, that come in the handle very much like a Victorinox. So this thing looks very cool. I like uh, how we in Civivi or, um, Civivi, I guess has been dabbling and flirting with multi-tool um, knives that is uh, primarily knives but with secondary tools like bottle openers and toothpicks stuff like that uh very interesting to me and this looks cool and i would love to 
uh, get a a Ben Peterson knife. He was such such a part of my knife viewing for a few years there, and seems like a great guy. I'd love to help support him. Uh, the NAF's knives are not as interesting to me personally, but that's because uh, they look like what they are super practical great user knives uh charming uh, just not up my alley um like this one lo looks like it is all right next up giant mouse now this one i saw at their booth uh there are a lot of people there and i didn't get a chance to handle this one i don't think this is the new rio from giant mouse it is a 3.35 magna cut blade very nice sort of slender drop point with a comet-shaped opening lozenge-shaped hole. Sorry, that was too many words. Uh, they say comet-shaped, I say lozenge. But yeah, I think it's more comet-shaped because one end is is broader. Anyway, uh, <laughs> perfect for flipping open. Beautiful blade. There's just a very, very slight, sinuous uh, nature to it. If you look at the spine of that blade, it sort of looks like it dips down near that opening hole and then comes up a little on the spine and then back down. It is a beautiful design. And I like, I like how it's uh, uh, put here with a, with a nice uh, maritime looking watch, like a sailing watch and glasses. It looks like a uh, sophisticated man or woman of adventures kind of knife, you know, uh, it's the knife you have in your pocket while you're sailing to Belize or something like that. A uh, very, very nice looking thing. Um, I, I, I like the, designs of giant mouse knives i have luckily escaped the moral imperative of owning their knives because they usually tend to be just below my preferred uh size that's very convenient for me because i think it's saved me a lot of money uh, this is in their ace lineup which means it won't cost you as much money as some of their other knives um so that that's definitely a plus here um so this comes in denim or green canvas micarta or you can get it uh with black g10 wire clip under three inch uh under three ounces is the new rio from giant mouse okay last up i just wanted to rattle off a couple of the pro uh, so the production awards from blade show i i was remiss last week in 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 letting you know now at blade show as you may know there are a lot of awards given um many of them to custom makers and um for the for the purpose of brevity and also like to to keep it to things that uh, most of us know. I'm just going to talk about uh, the the production <clears throat> production awards. Okay, so uh, just speaking of Giant Mouse, the overall knife of the year is the Giant Mouse GMX, uh, American made knife of the year, the Benchmade Narrows. Okay, I'm I'm going to tell you my theory about these awards when we're done. Okay, uh, the imported knife of the year is the Rosecraft blades clinch river sway back uh, the most innovative innovative american knife is the buck 590 paradigm i believe that's the one it's like a um, it's a uh, uh, bolster release lock i believe most innovative imported knife uh, the mazarin w lock manufacturing quality spartan blades limited edition spartan harzy folder i could concur with that man spartan harzy's are quite amazing. Best collaboration, We Knife Solid. Now that's with uh, Gustavo Ciccini, that's GTC. Talk about an innovative designer, his stuff is incredible. And I got a chance to check out that uh, We Knife at their U-shaped table. Uh, best investor knife, I like the term. <coughs> cool category, Shura Goroff Knives Mini Quantum CD. Best kitchen knife, the MKR, uh, MKM Prima from Italia. Uh, Best Buy, the Kershaw Iridium. I want to get my hands on that. And then accessory of the year, the WorkSharp Professional Precision Adjust. That one, I believe, is their sort of version of the Wicked Edge. Um, very awesome knives. Now, I said that I would I would tell you the my theory about this. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to be cynical, and I love Blade Show. But uh, sometimes it seems like a lot of the awards go to sponsors, you know, um, and I'm thinking of the Benchmade Narrows, which just came out and is extremely expensive. And I just don't think it's been in too many hands. And and I guess that's not the point. Um, also, Rosecraft, big, big, um, a big uh, sponsor. Uh, uh, but the, but also making cool knives, making great knives. I went up to their booth and checked out all their work and it is good stuff. Uh, but it just kind of makes you wonder, especially that Benchmade Narrows. I, I don't know. I, I think I 
I think I'm not crazy about that knife for some reason. I think it needs to come down in price. And I can't remember what its actual USP is, what its unique selling proposition is, what it is that justifies its very high price. Can you remember and put it in the comments for me uh, if you know? Okay, so that's Blade Show. What an awesome time, of course, as you hear me and so many other people say. But don't forget, it's also a, an awarded uh, a show with awards and also uh, people who are going for their um, their master smith and their journeyman smith test there. So it's a it's a a locus of knife uh, victory and drama. Let's say that. OK, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we'll take a look at the new Jack Wolf Knives knife, which is amazing. And it also fits into our list after that. What if you were prop? master of the movies uh, these are three knife carry uh edcs for five different movie character types coming up on the knife junkie podcast don't take dull for an answer it's the knife junkies favorite sign off phrase and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise like a t-shirt sweatshirt hoodie long sleeve tee and more even on coasters tote bags a coffee mug water bottle and stickers let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. He did it, Pa. He went and did it. Ben Belkin designed a locking knife. He didn't just design a locking knife. He designed like one of the best front flippers of all time. Okay, so this is the new Jack Wolf knife uh, for June of 2023. And this thing is amazing. Now, uh, before you saw that I was carrying the <clears throat> sharpshooter jack, obviously there's a family resemblance. These are both gunstock uh, jack patterns. Uh, the new gunslinger jack is larger, and yes, it is a front flipper. It is a bolster lock, and the thing that really is impressive to me is that, uh, you know, Belkin, I'm going to call him Belkin, Ben set out uh, to make the best slip joints, and he succeeded. In my in my humble opinion, he succeeded, uh, and when I say the best slip joints, I, I mean uh, taking all of the qualities that that slip joint connoisseurs uh, find to be most appealing, and he put them all into uh, these classic designs that he updated, and 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 I believe he succeeded like with he succeeded in the best way. Uh, he made these great knives. He 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 changed the expression of these patterns uh, to to be a personal expression of his knife taste. So he's uh, and. and he's produced these awesome things. Well, now he's, he's bent himself after 12 knives uh, to bolster lock front flippers and he's nailed it on his first, first outing. Uh, and to me, that's, that's impressive to me. That is a uh, multifaceted knife designer. So now I am fully confident that he could design a fixed blade and he could, he could design anything. I mean, if he could make this pivot, uh, and uh, that's not a um, that's not a pun because <laughs> it's a different kind of pivot. Uh, I don't know. Do you find that as impressive as I do? I hope you do, because uh, this this knife is really, really something to write home about. Uh, it comes with a sculpted titanium pocket clip. And if you like, you can remove that pocket clip and put a filler tab in there. Now, the, the hardware is hidden, so it would take a little doing, uh, but he supplies a filler tab, which is so cool, and it's that same blue anodized color. This is coming in five different flavors of carbon fiber. This is the absolutely gorgeous uh, Arctic Storm blue carbon fiber. Just beautiful. Uh, I would say that uh, Ben has sent me a number of carbon fiber knives while the uh, micarta knives were available he frequently sent me those because he knows how much i love that uh, but when he'd send me carbon fiber it was either black or the or the blue and you saw the blue it's just so beautiful um 
I really like these. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think I, I I tend towards these warmer. I mean, these cooler carbon fiber colors. I don't know. I haven't had the red or the or the yellow or anything like that. But my eye really goes to this uh, blue. It's got jimping. It's got a really uh, really nice locking setup here. That those thick titanium slabs, um, and then you've got the carbon fiber arresting the outward motion. It's got a uh, um, a steel insert there. It's really, really thinly ground S90V. Um, it's got great action. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's he's it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. I, I don't I don't think I have any sort of beef at all. Some might say more access to the lock bar. I say uh, in this case, even though there is no cutout, you, you put your finger in there. It It, it is how it should be in my in my book so very very psyched about this now this knife does not come with the standard jack wolf knives leather slip it does not fit in the standard slip it's bigger than any of the other jack wolves uh so if you do want to remove that clip and put in the spacer and then keep it in a slip there are a couple i believe two different leather makers on the Jack Wolf Knives website. I'm going to do this. I, I have to do this um, just to give myself the option where you can buy these beautiful leather slips. They look different from this. So they're, they're, they're unique and, um, you know, carry around uh, your gunslinger. So it all fits in there. Uh, so I might have to do that just so that I have options. Um, that is the gunslinger Jack. Very, very nice and beautiful knife. Very, very excited to have that. Now that's going to come into the list uh, coming up here. So I'm, I am always uh, looking at knives and movies and I'm always wondering, like oftentimes uh, you'll see that knives are definitely a second, uh, a second thought. Guns are so cool and you can really define a character with their gun uh, because that's generally what they're going to use more of in, in an action movie. But I, I say that you can subtly say an awful lot about a character through their knives. Think of, well, think of Rambo. <coughs> we, we learn about Rambo that not only is he big and dangerous and a, and a, and a badass, but he's also, he can take care of himself. He's a survivalist. You find all of that out through his knife. Uh, think of think of the knives they use in Predator. Think of the knives in Commando. Uh, they all say something about the characters. Well, sometimes uh, it seems like these prop masters just don't care. So I'm going to give uh, my advice on five different character types and uh, what their three knife carry should be. This is is inspired partially by a video that I saw Scab of Choir Boys Cutlery put out where. Uh, he was saying, you only get three more knives uh, for the rest of your life. What are they? And I, of course, I, I didn't want to think about that. That's just the kind of thought that is just unbearable to me. So I thought, what about what about if it if it weren't me, but it were these three different character types and they could only have three knives? <laughs> you know, so I, I, I put it on them. So first character type is riverboat gambler slash gunfighter. Someone you'd see on a riverboat in the in the early 1800s. Or, or someone that you might see on a dusty old street uh, getting ready to square off with someone with revolvers. Okay, first up, their main fighter, their big, their big knife, uh, if you will, would be the sub-hilt fighter. It would be this uh, hog tooth knives or something like it, uh, custom fighting knife, just for fighting. This is not for uh, splitting wood for the campfire or uh, for, for skinning that elk. Uh, that's going to feed you for the rest of the season. This is for fighting. Uh, this is for cards. This is for the bar. Uh, this is for squaring off by the jakes. Uh, Double-edged. You got a long uh, clip point blade. Um, this is, of course, a special steel because you're a gunfighter and and you had someone make this from the from the barrels of the the, the, the men you killed. Perhaps uh, same with the Quillians. Um, and then you have the stag handle. So it's got the, it's got the, uh, it's got all the nastiness of something that a gunfighter would want, um, uh, you know, have specially made for him because he's been in enough situations where his guns have jammed or he's run out of ammo and he'd have to move to a knife 
And this is kind of all those things distilled into one knife. Uh, but of course, he's going to have to eat steak and he's going to have to cut an apple and eat an apple off his knife and give sage advice. And he's going to do that with this Great Eastern Cutlery uh, number 97. It's, it's no shrinking violet, but it is a, a, a folding knife, a slip joint knife, non-locking. You've got that beautiful, long, Western looking to me anyway, clip point blade with that recurve. That recurve is so that as you sharpen it over time, uh, you'll sh kind of sharpen through that recurve and still have a clip point shaped blade. Um, beautiful autumn jig bone handle. I love these handles these bone handles from GEC. Uh, so that's going to be his pocket knife. And then, and then that knife that uh, he has stashed in his cummerbund or in his waistband when he's supposed to be disarmed, he's playing cards, but he's got a little something on him just in case. Well, that's going to be this, a push dagger. And in this case, it's the Stroop Knives push dagger, a new, um, a new model in their lineup. Uh, I highly recommend this. If you have a hankering for a push dagger like I did when I went to Blade Show, uh, this one really fits the bill. I love a double-edged push dagger. Always will go for that first. Um, but I also have learned that I like a push dagger that protrudes between the uh, middle finger and the forefinger, not between the ring finger and the middle finger. I am much more, I like this better up here, a little bit higher. Uh, this one has a sort of rustic look almost looks like a uh, napped um, spearhead that you've perhaps uh, picked up off the frontier and turned into a push dagger. So this is the riverboat gambler slash gunfighter um, setup here. It's the it's a, a subhilt fighter. Uh, I, I understand the subhilt fighter it wasn't invented until after this era, but it doesn't matter. This is kind of a fantasy thing. And this is the movies. It doesn't have to be real. It just has to look real. So, yes, a, a double-edged sub-hilt fighter, a, um, uh, a, a big slip joint like this uh, Great Eastern Cutlery 97, and then a push dagger for those, uh, for those moments around the card table when things are exploding and you don't want to be unarmed. Okay, next up, let's take a look at someone who's uh, I call, I, I've loosely called for a long time, the classy assassin, or uh, now that John Wick is such a part of our parlance, uh, we'll say like a John Wick character, you know, like the classy assassin, um, someone who's in a, a black suit, albeit uh, Kevlar, uh, but a black suit and just looking cool and has a, has a really cool gun and uh, lots of them and is very good uh, with martial arts and everything like that. But he does have to have knives. And he's going to have a few of them, three of them. And let's rattle them off here. Now, instead of a uh, an out the front, I know you're thinking out the front. I'm not thinking out the front. I love the out the fronts, and it's great for John Wick, but this is a different character. This is Max Corinth. This is a different guy, and uh, that is a character I came up with when I was about 12. And uh, we still talk about him around the dinner table. Okay, so this is Max Corinth, and he is a badass supreme. And instead of an out the front, he carries a ballet song. Not like, not like they do at Blade Show. He doesn't uh, endlessly twirl it around and and zone out in, in that sort of eerie way that they do. He uh, he opens it and uses it and closes it. But the, the reason I'm going with Bally Song for this classy assassin is because of all the cool fight choreography you can do with a Bally Song. Opening it, closing it, using it like a flail, hitting people in the head with the handle, and then and then stabbing them. You know, like, uh, there's a lot of very cinematic stuff you can do with, with a Bally Song. And then think of it in slow motion. You know, hitting someone, and then turning it around, and then slashing them. You do a lot of cool stuff. So, so my classy assassin uh, would definitely have a large butterfly knife as their as their main. Now, would it be the Kershaw Lucha? Probably not. We'd have to go with something uh, ridiculously expensive and and outlandish looking. You know, maybe with a crisp blade or something like that, or double edged dagger. Though for me personally, if I I the, with the way I flip a, a butterfly knife, I I can never have a double edged. It would just cut my hand too badly. All right, uh, next up, uh, this this classy assassin is going to have to do normal things. 
and uh, you know cut the apple or or cut the label uh, cut the the foil off a bottle of whiskey or something and he's going to use this now i was just showing this off uh, this knife to me uh, belongs in the pocket of a uh, classy assassin super spy type uh, this is the jack wolf knives gunslinger jack and uh, you know you've got this mix of old and new that i like so much it's this old pattern in that gun stock, but you've got the um, the new manufacturing. You've got the modern bolster lock and the modern uh, front flipper setup, and then this beautiful carbon fiber uh, black and blue would match perfectly with the shiny black suit Max Corinth is wearing as he's uh, shooting his way through whatever metropolis he's in. But also, it will stay secured uh, to the to his pants with this. Uh, pocket clip so you got some of the old and classy you could pull this out and cut your steak and uh no one's gonna bat an eye whereas yeah you pull this out and flip it around uh, people think you're ready for action so uh just you know when 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 there's a when there's peace and you still have to use a knife the classy assassin will use this um jack wolf knives gunslinger jack now when he's in an all-out knife brawl he's in a knife fight um with another certain someone it's going to be with this. Uh, this is the attention to detail mercantile medium folder with the tortoise shell handles, brass liners, and double-edged S35VN blade. Those uh, those uh, piv uh, those um, bevels are all deeply hollow ground, so it, this thing is a slasher slicer, uh, but also it is very pointy and quite nasty at the tip. You've got this luxurious crowning of the spine. The spine stands tall of the handle and is very, very comfortable. And uh, you can see that that, there you go, that's that crown and spine. You've got that very nice jimping going high up that bayonet style blade. So your thumb can really get some pressure on there for Filipino style uh, holds and grips. Uh, in reverse grip, it's awesome. Your, your thumb perfectly hooks over that pommel and you've got that that double edge to do all your business with and then look at it it's just beautiful it fits in with the kit you know you've got you could see this hanging upside down uh next to a couple of uh, uh pistol magazines under the left arm or under the right arm you know and and it can just be drawn and uh and used to battle balletic effect you know as you're as you're moving through the room dispatching uh bad guys so that is this is the john wick type the the um the classy assassin he would have a large butterfly knife for uh effect for flash for intimidation but also for its uh non um lethal uh applications you know using it as a flail um would make for some cool fight scenes uh second uh for you know at the bar scenes and that kind of thing and i'm sure he would dispatch a few people with it also uh, the very thinly hollow ground razor like gunslinger jack front flipper bolster lock from jack wolf knives and then the attention to detail mercantile double-edged medium fighter in a shoulder holster that i don't have but i can imagine and it's very cool believe me all right next up the professional adventurer type, the mercenary, the seasoned, uh, the seasoned military guy. I mean, this this could be a guy uh, that's the head of the platoon, you know, who's been in country for years, or this could be almost like an Indiana Jones type. But this is like someone who's definitely served many years in the military and is now a merc or a professional adventurer, or is just that seasoned old grizzled dude in the platoon who knows everything. Okay, so he he has three three unique blades. First one, we'll start with the folder. Uh, first one has to be the Buck One Ten. So this is on his belt, and uh, it's constantly getting rusty because they're in the jungle. But uh, oh, actually, no, no, not with this steel. That's not okay. So this is uh, you know about ten pounds on his belt here, extra. But he doesn't care because he's old school. He's an old school guy. He doesn't need some new fancy uh, new front flipper from Jack Wolf Knives. He's going to go with this, this boat anchor of a buck that he knows 
uh, with with that super acute point, that deep hollow ground blade, and uh, that nice heavy handle, that brass handle. He's dispatched a few suckers with this thing, um, and 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 then you know, and then cleaned game with it. Uh, so this knife is ready to roll, and then and then the old leather uh, sheath has got to be on the belt. This this character does not have a pocket clip. This this guy does not have a pocket clip protruding from his pocket. He has no carbon fiber on him. He has no lightweight materials. He has leather. He has brass. He has wood. He has steel. Okay, so the Buck 110 is on his belt. Also on his belt, mm -hmm, from his uh, from the war, uh, the uh, he's got a Randall made knife on his belt. Uh, in this case. It is the number one bladed uh, 16 special fighter. So this is what he's got on his on his belt. Uh, but I would imagine that the blade has changed shape slightly because it's been sharpened and used and been through hell several times. And uh, so, you know, ha has changed shape ever so slightly, but still has a very sharp back wedge like this one does. And that classic number one style Randall blade. Let me try and keep it still. Sorry, I'm moving it so much. Uh, and then the the number 16 part is the handle. The 16 is originally a dive knife. So it has a handle like this. And the original one has a drop point blade with a saw back. So this is a special one marrying those two models together. So that guy would have that. Some sort of exotic, uh, unusual Randall made knife uh, that he carried in the war. And uh, that saved him more than, uh, uh, more than many times. Uh, that would be on his belt. So lastly, what does this guy carry last? What's 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 his third knife? It would be this or something like this. Something that he got from a native on some old battlefield. In this case, in this case, the Filipino Barong. Let me put this over here. So on his backpack, he's got this. He's got some sort of uh, Barong or Parang. Uh, I, I like the Barong because... Here, it's this is too big. I'll hold it right here. I like the uh, barong because it is a machete, uh, but it's also very much a a, a weapon with that point, uh, the center line point, that uh, big big belly here, and the and the handle that is not only ornate and beautiful, but will will really stay in your hand as you swing it. And then uh, interesting thing about this, uh, I talk frequently about how. Uh, Filipino blades have that downward angle from the handle, and that makes the cutting very efficient. This one does not. Uh, this comes straight. But when you look at the end of the handle, it's the end of the handle that curves. So given the belly and then the curve at the end of the handle, you're still getting that downward angle that you have more that you can see more extremely on like a Taliban or something like that. Uh, which would also be an acceptable large knife for this professional adventurer Merc slash seasoned military guy. So his this this would be his his uh, three knife carry here, uh, a barong or something big like it uh, from from one of the places he served. His old sidearm knife from from the war that was given to him by his grandfather, we'll say, and then the Buck One Ten that he got at the PX uh, that that is just you know, has been killing it for the last 30 years. Uh, I love this carry personally. I, I like the addition of the, of the bring back or the native pickup uh, in, in the whole, in the whole character uh, thing that would really add to his character. You would, you would see, Oh, this guy's been around the block. Look, he's even carrying a barong. All right. Next up, we got sort of a pioneer type, uh, you know, not necessarily a cowboy, but someone who's, uh, I see it like kind of on a wagon train or, or, or a trapper, maybe someone, maybe someone from the, uh, the Revenant, someone like that. Okay. So of course these are modern knives, so they they wouldn't have existed back then, but you're suspending your disbelief because you're watching a movie and I'm the prop master. Okay. So in this movie, uh, he is a trapper. We'll call him a trapper, pioneer trapper type. Um, someone like from a Cormac McCarthy book, maybe. And this is his, this is what he's carrying on his belt. Uh, and it's a big old Bowie knife. And, and in this case, it's the Shining Mountain Bowie from Bark River Knives. 
I left the frog on. You know, usually I take the frog off because I, I like the idea of just slipping this under the belt. But in this case, this guy keeps this dangling from his belt. Uh, so I left the, the frog. They, uh, Bark River Knives makes the most exquisite sheaths. They really do. Uh, so does Randall, actually. They make very good sheaths too. But so this would be on the side. Of course, this this is for everything. You will you will uh, cut kindling with this to make your fire. You will uh, 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 dress out that moose with this when you when you shoot it, and you're gonna you're gonna cut it up to eat and and make uh, pelts and stuff. Uh, you're gonna use this to fight you know, in the, in the bar room brawl or that fight out by the Jakes, this is, this is the one you're going to use right here. Uh, this big intimidator. There've been times where you've pulled this out and people have just gone running. They know, they see the look in your eye and they know when they see that Bowie that, that you, you just mean business. And then you hold it backwards and they know you mean business. So uh, this is the great Eastern cutlery. I mean, this is the Bark River knives that you're going to be uh, this frontiersman trapper pioneer guy with. Next up, you have to have something smaller to do uh, utility stuff with, or, you know, uh, when you're supposed to not have a knife on you, this will be on you somewhere. And that is going to be the um, Hogtooth Knives Ruffian. Of course, Hogtooth Knives wasn't around back then. Neither was Kydex, unfortunately. I'm sure they would have loved Kydex back in the pioneer days. Uh, doesn't rot. And uh, with this, you can carry it in the waistband and uh, under your, under your, leather tassel suede vest no one's going to see it um but really what you have here is a very nicely hollow ground utility blade you've got a nice belly for doing your uh your hunting stuff you've got a nice point if you ever have to stab and you got that long long swedge and a good place to put your thumb and and uh the scallops in the grip are very very ergonomic this thing is not going anywhere even if you got blood on your hands from from your your hunting activities and such got a little flash of blue there a little flash of blue to remind you of heaven towards which you are always aiming um and then um the the really nicely uh, antiqued it would be wood back in the day but here it's micarta so you've got the ruffian you've got the great eastern uh, the bark river knives um shining mountain bowie and then you got to have a little a little folder for when you're in town or maybe you go to the saloon and visit the ladies and you don't want to be all weaponed up. So you would have this Finch Buffalo tooth in Coca Bolo. Now, if you're real fancy from the coast, you'd have it with the abalone, but I like it with the Coca Bolo. I think it, uh, it fits the bill perfectly. Uh, when I got this knife, I kept talking about what a gentleman's knife it is. And it is, it is a gentleman's knife just because it's not super slender and super small doesn't mean it's not a gentleman's knife but uh in compiling this list it occurred to me it's a certain kind of gentleman you know uh you, perhaps it's not the armani suit wearing gentleman perhaps it's the it's the the country frontier gentleman you know what i mean it's got the you're like no bob you have totally lost me at this point but you've got the super uh thin high height uh useful flat ground blade. I mean, this thing is, is very useful. It's also a spear point, which can be useful in a pinch, uh, but it's got this really nice big handle. And I'm imagining this frontier guy as a big dude with big, big uh, you know, mittens. And uh, so he's got to have something big to hold on to. So this is, again, not a shrinking violet of a folding knife. And I, I feel like the folding knives in this list have to be very substantial. Um, and there you go. So this is the Frontiersman uh, and Pioneer. Now, last up, last up is your Arnold Schwarzenegger type, your rock type, uh, your the rock type, you know, just immense human beings doing adventuresome stuff, uh, no matter if it's predator t style or, uh, or or commando style or or whatever it is. Um, I say the rock because he's a big person, uh, but I'm thinking more about Schwarzenegger. Uh, in terms of the kind of roles he's done. So he's got to have three knives. But what's this guy going to carry? I mean, you know, well, he's got to have a folder for practical purposes. So his folder is going to be this. The uh, XL Espada by um, Cold Steel, of course. By who, whom else? Uh, so this is a big Navaja, seven and a half inch. Uh, in my case, hollow ground Aus 8 blade. 
uh, with the shiny bolster and the shiny handle. It is it is a something that was given to him uh, by someone that trained him years ago. And uh, so he always, always carries it. Uh, this is the guy who taught him uh, European knife fighting uh, and then gave him this giant Navaja. It, it's always on him and uh, has gotten him out of many a pinch, including uh, after ribs and corn on the cob. He's used this as a toothpick. He's such a big dude. Uh, this has even come out as a toothpick. This is the Espada XL. Now, I know you're, you're, you're spotting this over here, so I'll just, uh, I'll just, I'll take it out right now. His main blade, you know, just for doing your average everyday uh, fixed blade stuff, of course, has to be the Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie here. Uh, this thing is just adequate for this gigantic dude uh, because you've got this huge handle here with the horse hoof pommel. Love that pommel. Uh, great for swinging, keeping that in, in your hand. But you can also put your giant finger right in here in this huge choil and choke up and do that kind of work. So, so your Arnie type, your The Rock type, uh, these huge individuals uh, who need knives would definitely have as a pocket knife the seven and a half inch XL Voyager. And then they would have the, uh, the Work Tough Gear Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie as their main fixed blade. But what if they get in a fight? You know, what if they get in a fight and they want something, uh, you know, that's efficient and, and just perfect for that uh, and doesn't give you too much handle for disarming or anything like that? Well, he would go for the Odin Wolf recurved double-edged sow catcher uh dagger this thing at nine inches uh in da in d2 steel with the with the really nicely uh flared out blade um would be just enough you know he could grip this in reverse grip and bury that handle under his thumb no one would ever be able to lever it out of his hands if they could even come close to him and uh, this would be just a great knife for this giant dude to fight with now if you look at it here i've got plenty of handle uh but this larger than life action hero would uh would would just bury the handle in his fist and this would become a secondary uh part of his body also makes for a good toothpick so here it is this is the last of the movie character types this is the arnie type the big action hero uh dude this would be his three knife carry if i were prop master in hollywood now this this is I, i'm i'm considering this a resume reel uh to all of you hollywood types who are watching right now and i know you're legion uh just know that uh i i charge reasonable prices and really i'm a thoughtful thoughtful uh knife prop um we'll we'll call me consultant uh, i will really think about it uh, and and i will give your character the best knife uh to define that character important stuff happening here at the knife junkie podcast thank you for joining me and uh, as always be sure to join us on sunday for a great interview and then tomorrow night for thursday night knives at 10 p.m eastern standard time right here on youtube facebook and does twitch still exist i'm not sure uh but there if they're still around uh be sure to join us and then also you can download this to a podcast app also, I, I, I'm, I always neglect to say this, but if you do want to help the show and you don't want to sh uh, shell out any shekels, I totally get it. Try uh, sharing this show with someone. Send this show to someone that you think just might have the knife proclivity. And uh, sharing does a lot of good. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, I implore you people, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.